Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, first C Data Cloud training session. Uh, this is the second uh, time we organize this uh, session. As you've seen, uh, some of your colleagues have been here last week uh, because we have more than 100 people attending this training session. Not only C Data Cloud partners, but also uh, representative of all the C data net uh, nodes uh, which connected and are still maintaining the connection in the frame of other projects like uh, MNet chemistry or GOCs, uh, MNet bathymetry also. Uh, all these people uh, are uh, concerned by mainly the upgrade of the infrastructure, so we, that's why we invited them also for this C Data Cloud training session. Uh, today, the day is devoted to uh, data quality control and uh, biological data management. My talk will be shorter than in the program, so you have plenty of time to get acquainted with the new ODV and uh, have lots of exercise in uh, using a, a real data set. Um, tomorrow, you'll get acquainted with the new uh, tools or the new uh, pieces of uh, the infrastructure, how we evolve to, to the cloud, and also what and how it will impact your daily life and also the way uh, users can retrieve information from the CDataNet uh, infrastructure. Um, the third day will be uh, more classic, I would say, uh, devoted to the tools we developed in CDataNet and CData Cloud to handle the data, to prepare the data, to uh, publish them in our infrastructure. Uh, as you already see, we are numerous in, in this room and we have, uh, I'm afraid, a bit of overbooking because we, uh, f a few colleagues will join us uh, tomorrow, those who are not handling uh, chemical or uh, just physical oceanography data. Uh, so, well, it will be warmer tomorrow than today, I already warn you. <laughs> um, so, uh, before we go to, uh, to the exercising with the quality control, we found it interesting uh, uh, the regional work, uh, the regional product leaders found it interesting to uh, deliver you their first findings after the first round of uh, cross cross quality check uh, we did on salinity and temperature data sets uh, these last months. But also, I have a contribution from uh, CC about what they uh, found in the in the for the same exercise in MNet chemistry, at least in the, in the Mediterranean. So I will uh, shortly overview what are the C Data Cloud products and why uh, did we decide to make products. Uh, what is the quality uh, check strategy we follow? Uh, uh, what is the timeline for uh, making the products available? Um, uh, uh, just an overview again on the quality control procedure and some example of uh, data anomalies uh, and metadata issues and also what you as data provider can expect from us once we have finished with this uh, control of the data sets. So, in this project, we have three types of products. First one uh, are the aggregated data sets uh, of, for all the sea basins around Europe. Uh, we have the North East Atlantic, or the, the, the Baltic, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, the Black Sea, the Arctic, and the North Sea. These uh, Data sets are made of the unrestricted records available in the CDataNet uh, infrastructure. And then we will, based on this uh, data, but also all the data we can collect, we will uh, provide climatologies. We will compute them using the DIVA tool. Uh, 
In CData Net 2, these climatologies were sought as a proof of concept, showing that uh, there were already enough and useful information in the CData Net infrastructure to provide good quality uh, product. But now we, uh, uh, our goal is to, to make the best available clim climatologies. So for that, we will also use data from other sources and uh, gather them and uh, compute the climatologies on these full uh, data sets. And finally, we are looking at new data products. For the, the moment, we are only concentrating on uh, a local profile, I mean, uh, or uh, XTD, uh, salinity and temperature data. But we will look at other uh, multidimensional sensors and, and also combine information from high frequency uh, measurements or typical specific uh, sensors like the ones on the Argo Boy and so on and so on. We will also provide climatologies uh, for the global ocean. So the, the, the goal or the, the, what is behind uh, making this product internally is uh, it's a way to improve the quality of the content of the infrastructure uh, through cycles of uh, quality assessment. So we harvest the data, we check the data, we provide you with a feedback, and you are supposed to uh, apply this feedback to your data, making your holdings better. Uh, we are together developing new methods to ensure quality and the homogeneity of the, of the data sets. Uh, this is something which is really visible when you, we look at aggregated data sets. We see the signature of each of your data center in the way data are produced or controlled. So uh, making a, a, a transversal control is very useful for the, for the uh, homogeneity of the data set. Uh, so, as I told you, we will integrate external data sets for the climatologies to generate uh, the best data products. This is uh, useful for another community uh, with which we uh, work regularly, and uh, the C Data Cloud or C Data Net assigned a memorandum of understanding with the uh, the CMEMS, so the marine component of Copernicus. Uh, these people are uh, producing uh, forecasts and reanalysis on the basis of uh, using mathematical models which need uh, initial conditions, uh, atmospheric forcing, uh, and uh, also data assimilation. And in this scheme, with our product, we can uh, provide useful information at three of these uh, various uh, steps. So the climatologies provide initial conditions for the models. The uh, reanalysis can be combined or compared with the harmonized historical data collections. And the uh, validation procedures can also rely on climatologies and other uh, reprocessed uh, time series of the data. So this process is very useful for the for the, the uh, uh, wide community. So as I told you, we you uh, publish your data to the uh, uh, using the C Data Net infrastructure, providing the CDIs to the central database. At a given uh, point in time, there is uh, harvesting, targeting those data that interest us, sanity and temperature in our case various chemical uh, contaminants or concentrations for the ammonet uh, uh, chemistry. There is an aggregation process that makes, uh, well, the, the aggregation process is uh, uh, gathering all the data. Salinity, for instance, you can have various types of salinity. Uh, it's useful to know it from the in the original file for these uh, for the climatologies, and so it's not that use, useful to know uh, which sensors has been used or which method has been used. So there is an aggregation towards the P thirty five vocabulary, uh, in which there is only one salinity. So all the salinities from the 
uh, wider vocabularies are uh, merged into only one p cell salinity. Then we perform the, the quality control, which is mainly uh, based on, on um, uh, using uh, ODV, performing some systematic tests, uh, and expert judgment. And then we report back the anomalies uh, we, we spotted, or what we think are anomalies, to the, uh, to the data centers, who in turn have to uh, implement or to, uh, to, to, to uh, take care uh, of these uh, possible anomalies to improve their uh, holdings. So, what is the, the timetable for these uh, products? Uh, the harvesting uh, has taken place uh, at the end of last uh, year, and we uh, make the, made the aggregated data sets after quality control available at the beginning of uh, April this year. We will, uh, in the near future, provide the climatologies, and the new data harvesting will be done in April next year. So in the meanwhile, you will receive our comments on your data in the form of uh, uh, ODV uh, log files that tell where we changed, basically where we changed the quality flag, and uh, most of the time you will also receive from us some more textual comments, some more descriptive comments. Uh, we original uh, product leaders were taking notes on what we are doing because, well, it's not possible to directly comment in the ODV log files what we did, but sometimes we need to explain why we changed a uh, uh, quality flag. So uh, be ready, this file, these comments will come back to you uh, at the end of the month normally, and so we'll have some interaction with you in the next weeks and months uh, to improve the data sets. Uh, what are the tests we routinely uh, performed on your data sets? Uh, well, first, uh, there are a few tests on uh, data coverage, uh, distribution. These are more statistics than, than checks. Uh, the, the geographical distribution of the data, the, the repetition in time, uh, and also along the D uh, axis, uh, we uh, looked at how many data we had. And then we basically work on the various uh, scatter plots uh, we can uh, generate using ODV, uh, temperature versus depth, salinity versus depth, uh, uh, salinity temperature scatter plots, the uh, density uh, uh, check. Uh, and then uh, we had to look Either by, well, what we, we did is by data center and also by region, reach region, sub-region, uh, look at the, all the data that you flagged as good to see whether we agree on that, um, and also the probably good. Then all the data which have a quality flag of zero, which means these data are publish, published but were not quality control, and this is something we want to eliminate. We, we rely on you uh, to work towards publishing only quality control data sets. So that's in the data available through the central portal are all flagged with a value above zero. Uh, the usual test on uh, the stations, uh, whether they fall on land. Uh, this is more a question of metadata. Uh, the position of a station of a profile is in the metadata. Unfortunately, for the moment, we don't have a quality flag on, on the, the various metadata fields. So uh, we cannot flag uh, the, the, the position as bad. So while well, depending, 
it's not harmonized on our side. Some of the people just flagged the, the, the depths as bad. Uh, other one just rejected it. Profiles which were on land, so this, uh, uh, these are uh, examples where we have, will have to, to talk uh, together. Uh, we have also uh, unreal depths when the uh, uh, other measurements of salinity above the sea surface, we had, we had quite a, a few, or uh, depths that are greater than the actual depths at, uh, at the station, at the given station. Uh, I also, well, uh, b beside the, use, the, the usual uh, tests of, uh, for discovering spikes, outliers, and so, I also used the DIVA embedded in ODV to spot for uh, outliers, um, special outliers. So values that are good, but not for the place where they were measured. So very low or lower salinity uh, uh, at places in the ocean, you didn't discover when you looked at the temperature and salinity data because you are mixing sometimes coastal data and, and uh, seawater data. But using DIVA, you suddenly see high gradients. And you can look deeper in that and identify a station that where maybe uh, the sensors at the surface was not yet stabilized and was giving a too low value for salinity. This is also uh, a useful tool embedded in ODV. Looking at the metadata, um, well, what we would like to point out first is that uh, too often there is not enough metadata given. Please, there are many fields, give a value for as many of them as possible. It's really interesting for doing a, a global uh, quality control to be able to look per instrument, for instance. Uh, too many centers either do not give the information or do a, a, a wrong information, give a, a wrong information. Uh, we have had uh, the instrument type set to CTD, why, where uh, obviously only one measurement was taken. So it's a bottle measurement. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a CTD. Um, we also have the, the strange case I understood only last week to talking to the coll collating center of uh, XBTs stuck in the, the, the sand, in the sea, sea bottom. And where the depth was increasing, increasing, while it's just the wire watch was not broken. So uh, we have depths of more than 100 meters, where the actual depth is 20 meters. And this instrument was still giving a, a constant value. Um, and some of these uh, clearly XBTs uh, profiles were reported as CTD. So it's, it's very difficult for us to track these anomalies if we cannot filter on the type of instruments. So please, I take this example, but be as generous as possible when providing metadata. Uh, we have the mixing of, uh, of the measuring uh, area type. Uh, we have, for instance, bottle measurements, which is a single measurement at a given point, which, where the measurement area type is defined as a curve. This is misleading when we are doing the, the uh, quality control. Um, we also have moorings, so time series, that we are defined as profile, vertical profile. Um, and I have the, the, the difficult case in the, in, uh, in the North Sea of a long series of measurements made by thermostor chains, which were replacing each other during several months. So this is more, more I would say, I would flag that as a time series of time series. It's a very uh, huge amount of non-independent data. And this question of independent data is... Um, of importance when using DIVA, because for the statistics in DIVA, you need to handle uh, independent data. And all these time series have to be treated 
uh, high frequency measurements like ferry box and so I have to be treated in another way. So this is a, a discussion ongoing. How uh, shall we subsample the high frequency measurements? Uh, I have seen in the uh, metadata also a vertical resolution given in minutes. And this is because uh, the, it was a, a en route data, so the ferry box likes data series. So, uh, and it's not a vertical resolution, it's a, a frequency. But because the, the people of the data center declared that as a vertical profile, they use the vertical resolution to uh, set the, the unit of the resolution, which is a time resolution, not a space resolution. So this is an, an example of, of uh, data um, stations on land. Uh, as you can see, it occurs in every uh, sea basin. So to, to give you a few examples of the data anomalies we uh, encountered, uh, I hope you can see this on, on the screen. Uh, so you have this value. Uh, which is clearly out of range, is a salinity of 10 in, in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, and this has been, uh, has received the quality flag of 1. Uh, so I, we don't know why it, it passed the, 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 the quality control in that case at the, the, the center, but this is something we, we noticed. We, these are other examples. Uh, we also have data uh, that are uh, wrong, that do not belong to the characteristics of the, the, this sea region, and that were uh, flagged as good in, in this case. Or we have also uh, values that are exactly equal to zero, which are highly suspect in most of the cases. So look at this profile. Uh, suddenly, you have a value going back to zero. This is a sensor problem or a transmission problem. And, but it received, it received a, a, a quality flag of one. We, well, either it's a sensor problem or it's a transmission problem, and uh, the missing value is set to zero, uh, and the quality flag is set to one. This is a problem. You can set whatever you want uh, for the uh, missing value. Minus uh, 999 is one of the most used uh, value, but please use the quality flag of nine, which is the one that has to be used uh, for the missing value. We don't have to interpret your own internal um, standard, if I uh, can uh, call it a standard, to uh, express a missing value. It can be zero, it can be plus 999 or minus 999, but please use the quality flag of nine. Don't put a quality flag of zero or, or whatever on that. This is uh, does someone well? It's written uh, above, but does someone uh, understand what happens here? This is something we see often in shallow seas, uh, in Belgium, the Netherlands, also some German profiles, and yeah, um, and we we found the explanation. As you can see, first you have two values at the same level. Uh, this is the sign that, the, contrarily to the standard, the CTD, both the downcast and the upcast of the CTD have been reported in the same file. Uh, the rule is to publish only the downcast. We know that for some biologists appreciate, for, for I don't know the reasons, to receive the upcast. If and there is at least one collating uh, center that does that. If 
you are requested to also publish the upcast, please mark it clearly, preferably even in your C, uh, CDI name, local CDI name, so that we can directly see that it, it is an upcast, but put it in your metadata. So, first of all, this is a, a profile, a, a data file that contains both the dawn and the upcast. In ODV, the time of each individual me measurement in your CTD profile is lost. You don't have that. You do only have the position and the time of the sampling occasion, not of each individual measurement. So what o ODV cannot interpret that. It, it only sees that there are two measurements at the same depth. That's why these lines are uh, connecting the, the, the points in zigzag. And we cannot tell whether it's uh, 18, the good value, or uh, 26. In this case, also, there is clearly a problem with the um, stabilization of the sensor. The, the CTD has been dropped, and uh, the people haven't wait, uh, waited uh, enough for the instrument to be stabilized. You don't see it that much in temperature, but in, sen in uh, salinity, you see it. Uh, we know that for some seabird equipment, there was, was at a given time a bug with the software. And values that were in the first three meters that should have been eliminated were still in the file after the seabird uh, quality control. So this might be the cause of the problem. Uh, the other cause of the problem is that uh, in our regions, we have the case of people being only interested in the temperature at the sea bottom. So they don't care about the measurements in the surface. They just drop the instrument. Temperature is stabilized very, very fast. So they get the value at the bottom. And then they, they take the, the instruments uh, back to, to the vessel. But salinity is totally wrong. Uh, someone working in, in his home. <laughs> OK. Uh, but this problem of the uh, stabilization of the instrument is also present in other parts, in other seas, and it's not so easy to see it in where the depth is, uh, is high, because you have, let's say, 100 measurements. You, go, you have a look at the global profile, and most of the time you won't zoom in up to the upper layer, and you don't see that especially if you have a lot of measurement at the same time on a, on a temperature and salinity uh, scatter plot. So be careful with the first layers. Maybe sometimes uh, the values are wrong just because the instrument was not uh, used appropriately. We have also uh, the case of unstable uh, profiles. And there are tools in ODV, these are just uh, the uh, uh, plots of the value against the, the depths, but you have tools in ODV to, to show uh, density maps and, and check that more carefully. Um, in, in this case, we have what we believe are uh, sensor issues. You see these uh, oscillations. But we also have here a, a problem that should be discussed uh, with, uh, amongst us is, do we publish CTD, the raw CTD, very high uh, uh, frequency of value, or do we only publish CTDs at standard depths, IOD depths, or uh, every 10 meters, every meters, but uh, profiles that have been filtered and subsampled. This is more useful for us uh, for doing the climatologies, because we have, uh, uh, we don't, such a profile will give more weight to a, to a station in a climatology, because we have a higher density of measurements at a given point. So this is something uh, we have to, to look at, maybe decide at a given point in time that we uh, publish raw profiles or a uh, very high density of measurements profile on one hand, 
and the same data with the standard method for sam sampling the profiles that will be applied to all CTD uh, data for uh, present in C data net. This is open for discussion. Um, yes, the, the case of the, the, the zero value again. The spikes, some example of uh, very huge spikes that uh, went through uh, the, the first quality control. Uh, we have the case of uh, one uh, CDI with 17 stations in that, so please be careful. Uh, try to use for profiles one CDI pointing to one profile. Because uh, remember, date and time of sampling are is in the metadata. So it's uh, we don't believe that someone dropped seventeen uh, CTDs at the same time at the same place. And, well, this is something that is more for us. We had some issue uh, when uh, in the aggregation process because. Sometimes people provide two types of salinity, as I told you, and one is the reference salinity, and they performed quality control on that, and they put a, a quality flag on, on that one. And the other one, it's just for documentation, they don't perform the quality control, though they put a quality control flag of zero. And in the aggregation process, ODV up to now was taking the worst uh, case the, the 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 worst quality quality flag so data with zero in one theory and one in the other theory uh, the the ODV was taking the average of them but putting an, a quality flag of zero so uh, the, the 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 true quality control was was lost so this is something that is being this being corrected now. In chemistry, uh, they show they reported the case of. Uh, values having two different uh, par parameters name according to our standard vocabularies but pointing to the same local local name which is uh, a bit uh, curious uh, the same the uh, missing values that are uh, pro reported or published with the quality flag of one or even a negative value for for, for uh, chemical uh, for chemical concentration that are flagged as, as good. Um, so other, other example of uh, wrong val values with a flag of one. In this case, uh, there is a conversion problem uh, for, for the depths apparently because uh, this depth is uh, much more higher than the actual value in the Mediter Mediterranean. So this is something we often see uh, also that uh, the, when there is a conversion error from pressure to depth. Of course, then you have a factor 10 in the, in, in the levels that are provided with the data. Apparently, uh, wrong uh, units in this case on, on, on the left, um, or conversion error. Non-controlled data, uh, which look good, so please take the time to look at your data and set another quality flag than zero. So this is a summary I, I, uh, of what uh, I just uh, showed you. You will find it in, in, uh, in the PowerPoint, which is uh, online. Uh, what is the feedback? The feedback, as I told you, is, is uh, uh, mainly uh, consists of uh, the log files of ODV that tells you that for this CDI, uh, what we, we did, what uh, parameter, what quality flag we, we changed. Uh, this is not so easy to read because sometimes we will provide you with tens or uh, hundreds of, of uh, records like this. Um, so it's better at a given time to have a discussion with us to know what exactly we, we spotted and why we did the change. In turn, we expect from you some uh, synthesis of what you have done with the information 
we will provide you. So we will provide you with this uh, summary of errors, this listing, and we expect from you some report to, to tell us, yes, you were right at that place and we, we did that change or, or on our data or on the quality flag, or no, uh, you are missing, uh, uh, you, you, you are not aware, of, there is in that area a specific uh, uh, situation and these values are good and so on and so on, so that we can improve the whole cycle. A comment also, uh, too many data are still restricted and we don't know why. Uh, for some of you, it's just because you, don't, you haven't had the time to quality control the data. Uh, so they look good, uh, but they all have the quality flag of zero and because uh, for well, you, your, your question is you, you don't publish them as unrestricted. If you could take the time to look at them and to uh, make them unrestricted. Uh, for some other areas, there are other reasons, but if these are uh, administrative reasons or whatever, please put some effort in making this data unrestricted because they are in the system. Uh, we don't hide them, so it means the CDI are visible, but if the people want them to use them, there is a long process to, to, to get the permission to, to access the data if at the end they get the permission. And so for the moment, the only use for this data is in the making of the climatologies because we ingest them, we use them, but we don't publish them. We make products from them. So for each of the aggregated, what you, you can get also for each of the aggregated uh, data sets, uh, we wrote a product information document describing the data set and its quality. Uh, these documents will have a DOI uh, so that it makes also the data sets more visible. And what is interesting for you is that it's at the bottom line here, is that in the, this product uh, information document, we provide the list of all the data collating centers and all the data uh, providers uh, of the data which were used. In so. so you are uh, duly acknowledged in, in this and you can also use this uh, document to show that you are uh, contributing to uh, this uh, process of making the data better that you are uh, in the process for providing the community with new and good and better products. Uh, I will stop here because this is something you will learn more about uh, tomorrow and uh, at the next uh, General Assembly. But in the future, we will move all this uh, process to the cloud. Uh, this will make part of our life easier. Uh, some of the things and the tests will be automated, but your role is still essential. Provide from the beginning the best possible data. Thank you. Any reaction on this?